Hello, welcome to a new video. This one is a little bit different than what you are usually used to on my channel. I'm not going to talk about using a certain program and doing certain operations on the CNC. I'm going to talk about what you need to know in order to operate your CNC. You might have just bought one CNC or you are planning to buy one. What you need to know to use it. Is it simple? Is it complicated? You've seen those videos, those fun videos where somebody throws a piece of food on the CNC table, presses a couple of keys and then everything works okay. Well, it's not that easy. In this video I'll try to show you where to start from maybe you just want to cut sheets of plywood maybe you want to do 3d carvings maybe you want to do engravings using your CNC is possible but you will need to use a lot of tools and I'll try to explain to you exactly what you need to know in order to get the job done and now for the ones that don't have the patience to watch this entire video I will fast forward to the end where I will make a summary of what you need to know you will need a program that runs on your controller on the board of the machine for that i'm using fluid and see there are a lot of options a lot of open source options you can also control the machine directly from a computer using linux cnc but there has to be a program that controls how the motors move the second thing is to know how you can send those commands to the machine for example you can load the file on an sd card and load it on the board of the machine if it is possible depending on the hardware that you have or you might need a computer to connect the computer to the controller and send those g-code commands that program is called the g-code sender for 2d drawings you will need a software that can generate vectorial graphics that is inkscape in my situation i like to use it because it is very popular and you will find a lot of support for different problems that you might encounter for designing technical things such as connection plates such as parts for furniture i like to use freecut because it allows me to set precise dimensions even modify them to make models that can be parametric i can have a list of values change them and the model will change accordingly and the good thing about freecut is that it also has an add-on for generating the g-code the cam part this is the fourth part that you need to know the cam part which turns a model into g-code into commands that your machine understands and for more natural for fluid things for curves and for 3d carvings i like to use blender because it is the best open source software there is for creating such models and it also has an add-on a very powerful add-on to transform those models into g-code for your cnc so you will need a controller software you need to know how it works you will need a g-code sender a program that will send the g-code commands to your controller you will need a 2d vectorial drawing program you will need a 3d modeling software to create the models and you will need a cam program the program that turns the models into actual g-code so let's get started the first thing that you need to know when purchasing a cnc or if you already have one you need to know how it operates what type of controller does it have there are a lot of controllers they talk different languages but all those languages together are called g-code it's a set of commands a set of instructions that you will send to the machine using your computer or maybe putting the file on an sd card and then loading it so the first thing that is very important is the controller that you have in my situation i'm using a grbl controller it's an open source well it's not exactly a grbl it's a fluid and see it's a more advanced version of the grbl and i have chosen it because the chip that controls my cnc is much faster i like it because you can easily modify the configuration which in my case is very important because you might have seen it in other videos i also have a plate for my cnc which turns it from a vertical milling machine to a horizontal milling machine and because of the way fluidency works in just a couple of seconds i can switch from one configuration to the other and everything is smooth the second thing that you need to master in order to control your cnc is the g-code sender it's a program on your computer be it windows apple or a linux computer you need to be able to pass those commands to the controller the g-code sender simply sends those commands through the interface which might be an usb interface a parallel port interface a network cable connection it doesn't really matter you need to pass that information to the machine in my case i'm using universal g-code sender there are several options for a grbl controller each machine controller has a set of commands that it accepts so you will need to know what machine you have you will need to know how the software on your computer communicates with the controller of the cnc let's move over to the most important part to what you need to know in order to generate the g-code to generate the language that your machine understands as you've seen in many of my videos i show you how to generate the g-code 
but I always base my videos on a certain model. The modeling part is split into two main parts, the 2D modeling, which is simple graphics, you can use those for engraving, for v-carving, for cutting plywood sheets, of course, and the 3D modeling, which is a lot more complex, obviously. Let's stick to the first part, to create 2D drawings, to transform them into language that your CNC can understand. The most commonly used 2D format is the SVG format, or maybe you have seen DXF format, which is an older AutoCAD format. I tend to use SVG, I find it much easier to work with it, but you can work with either of those formats. What program do you need to learn to use in order to be able to make the graphics that you need and make them appropriate for turning them into G-code. For generating the 2D graphics, I generally use Inkscape. It's a pretty easy to understand program. You will find tons of tutorials, tons of discussions. The more popular a software is, the more you will find anything that you might uh, get stuck on. You will find a lot of information about how to solve that problem. But okay, you've created the 2D graphics. How do you turn it into G-code, into commands that your machine understands? The G-code senders know how to turn SVG files into G-code based on the settings that you enter in the program. The language that you're sending to the machine depends on certain things, such as the position of the cutter head, the diameter of the toolbit, the height of the toolbit, the place where you will clamp the piece to the table. You have to enter all those parameters in the G-code sender program and it will automatically generate and send the commands to your machine. But what if you want to make more complex things? For example, the V-carve operation. V-carve means you have a V-cutter which by setting the height lower or higher will make a wider or a smaller line. This enables the machine to make very nice graphics with variable lines. For this type of operation, things get more complex. You won't be able to do that using just the simple sender. What you need to do is find a program that can understand the graphics, understand the width of the lines, understand the dimensions of your cutter toolbit and then transform that information into actual cutting lines, put them into a G-code file, then you will be able to load it into the G-code sender and send it to the machine. Such an example is the medial axis in Blender Cam. So even though I'm still talking about 2D operations, they kind of start to turn into 3D operations and here I'm going to talk about actual 3D modeling, modeling parts, modeling technical things. How do you do that? Well, here is the part that it's called CAD, which stands for Computer Aided Design. There is a huge amount of programs that can do that, paid, open source. Personally, I'm using two of them, both of them, of course, open source, FreeCAD and Blender. Why did I choose them? Because both of them also have an integrated part to export those designs into CNC language, which is called CAM, Computer Aided Machining. FreeCAD has a very powerful CAM workbench. Of course, it has some issues. Any program of this kind will have its own issues. You will need to know the hacks for every program that you are using. There are going to be hacks about using that software. So that is the reason a lot of people tend to stick with the software they have started. So if the machine came with a certain program, they will tend to use that certain program because they are used to the hex they need to know in order to operate the machine with that program. It's a difficult transition between two programs. When I tried Blender Cam, the Blender and the Blender Cam, it was a, it was a very bad experience at first. All the controls were different, the objects are interpreted in each of the programs is different, so changing from one to another was a difficult time, but I got used to Blender now and I tend to use both of them depending on the situation, sometimes FreeCAD is better, sometimes Blender is better. So now I'm going to talk about the most complex part, the CAD part, designing your models. For this, as I've told you, there are a lot of programs. I'm using FreeCAD for the more technical stuff, the parts that I need to machine for my CNC, for example. I once needed to mill the end of some very long wooden boards. I wasn't able to put them upwards because of the floor of the shop. I had to make a plate to be able to rotate the spindle of the machine. I used FreeCAD for that. It's a very useful add-on to my CNC. I don't use it too often, but 
when I need it, it's very useful. If you like that idea and you want me to explain a little bit more about how I use it, how I've created it, let me know in the comments and I will make a video about that rotating plate. I will also tell you how I would do it next time because for sure I would change some things in the design. Until modifying that plate, I will also have to add the fourth axis to make rotary stuff to mill things on the CNC using a fourth axis. I've seen a lot of people interested. I'm currently saving to buy the parts necessary for that feel free to subscribe to my Patreon page. It will only help me to get that fourth axis faster and I will be able to make a series of videos about using that both in FreeCAD and in Blender of course. So FreeCAD is better for technical things, for parts. Of course you can also use the Curves Workbench and create smooth uh, natural lines but for that I prefer to use Blender because it is much more advanced in that category and as you remember I've told you that I've chosen FreeCAD and Blender because both of them have add-ons that can generate the G-code from the models that you are creating. So let's sum it up. You will need a program that runs on your controller on the board of the machine. For that I'm using Fluid and see there are a lot of options, a lot of open source options. You can also control the machine directly from a computer using Linux CNC. But there has to be a program that controls how the motors move. That is the first thing that you need to know about your CNC. The second thing is to know how you can send those commands to the machine. For example, you can load the file on an SD card and load it on the board of the machine if it is possible depending on the hardware that you have or you might need a computer to connect the computer to the controller and send those G-code commands. That program is called the G-code sender. For 2D drawings you will need a software that can generate vectorial graphics that is Inkscape in my situation. I like to use it because it is very popular and you will find a lot of support for different problems that you might encounter. For designing technical things such as connection plates, such as parts for furniture. I like to use FreeCAD because it allows me to set precise dimensions, even modify them to make models that can be parametric. I can have a list of values, change them and the model will change accordingly. The good thing about FreeCAD is that it also has an add-on for generating the G-code, the CAM part. This is the fourth part that you need to know, the CAM part, which turns a model into G-code, into commands that your machine understands. And for more natural for fluid things and for 3D carvings I like to use Blender because it is the best open source software there is for creating such models and it also has an add-on a very powerful add-on to transform those models into G-code for your CNC. So you will need a controller software, you need to know how it works, you will need a G-code sender, a program that will send the G-code commands to your controller, you will need a 2D vectorial drawing program, you will need a 3D modeling software to create the models and you will need a CAM program, the program that turns the models into actual G-code. Is that all that you need to know in order to operate your CNC? You also need to know a lot of other things such as how to hold the piece to the table. A lot of times this is one of the most challenging part because you want to mill let's say the entire outline of the piece but you also need to hold it down. Another thing is to know what tool bit, what speed, what spindle speed, what movement feed rate speed to use. You will learn this over time, you will damage a lot of cutter tool bits. I did that, everybody did that. Of course there are guides that can help you to understand what type of tool bit to use in certain situations, how to set the speeds, how to set the spindle speed based on the movement speed, what kind of movements result in a better surface, what kind of movements result in a faster operation, all different types of tool bits of shapes, they can be useful for certain things. It's a much more complex world than let's say the 3D printing world which can also be pretty difficult but it has much less parameters to take into account when making something. So if you want more videos like this please let me know in the comments. I will try to take each part and talk more about it. For example if you want a video about how to discover what settings to use for the feed rates for the spindle, the step down of the tool be the direction of the cut, I can make videos like that. Let me know in the comments and I will try to explain as much as I know. You will still see a lot of free cut videos because everything is changing. You will still still see a lot of Blender videos about using the Blender Cam or CNC Cam as it is called now. When I will be able to get the fourth axis, I will make a series about using the fourth axis. So any help through my Patreon page or directly through YouTube helps me a lot to achieve that goal to have a fourth axis and start making videos about that. If there is something that you want more details on, let me know and I will try to make a video about that as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. 
See you next time for the next video on my channel on open source CNC.